Hey, welcome back to the workshop. For today's video, I'm going to do something I've never done before on this channel. I'm going to do an unboxing because I've purchased a Raka Korpi Soturi knife from Finland. Let's check it out. All right, so I purchased this, uh, this knife from Lamnia and uh, it took about two weeks to get here uh, to the Midwestern United States from Finland. All right, foam peanuts, all the foam peanuts. Oh, and candy, candy from Finland. How awesome is that? I have no idea what this is. We're gonna try it. All right, what are we working with here? This uh, box says Korpi Soturi on the front here, which in Finn, I think means like wilderness warrior or forest warrior, or backwoods, something, something, something. Um, here we've got Rakka knives, the better blades. Better than what? I don't know. Better than something. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. We'll open her up. All right. We got a card, a warranty card. We've got some kind of belt loop. We've got a bag of hardware. We've got packing paper. We don't need that. And then we've got the knife, and this is the one that comes with the utility clip, which uh, is pretty cool. This is actually metal. Check it out. All right, good, good stuff. Here we go. This is the uh, Raka Korpi Soturi. And I can tell you right away, um, it's smaller than I thought it was going to be, which in a way is kind of good. This already seems like this would be a very useful knife. A lot of these types of knives, they get these big long blades because people think they need this this huge honking monster thing to do their uh, you know camping and, and bushcraft and stuff with and I, I think you don't. You know something in the four inch range is, is probably the best mix of, of size and, and utility at least for me and, and my experience. So before we get to the knife, I think we should talk about the sheath. And this sheath is really interesting. It's kind of a organic-y plastic material, like a, like a compressed wood micarta. If you've ever seen the uh, kupilka cups and plates and things, which I think also come from Finland, this appears to be a very similar material. It's like a, a resin-infused compressed fiber of some kind. Should be very tough stuff. The utility clip on here, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but it, it looks like it, it might have some kind of adjustment. It is a very stiff spring, and it's sized. It looks like you could use this for uh, belts up to uh, about one inch and three quarters wide. So it should accommodate a wide variety of belts. Uh, the sheath also comes with a tool kit. We've got a couple of extra screws and a little Allen key here. And uh, this other style of belt loop. I think this is the uh, the more traditional one. Kind of bends around like that and then you, you screw it to the side. And I may switch to this in the end. I don't know. We'll, we'll play around with it some later. All in all, a uh, very compact, uh, stout little system. And I should note that the knife... Uh, you know, it, it positively locks into the sheath with a, uh, a solid feeling click. You can't really hear it because this sheath is rubbery and it, or, uh, <clears throat> this knife handle is rubbery and it's quiet, but uh, it does lock very positively. You know, this is, is not coming out of there anytime soon. So setting that aside, let's look at the knife. Got a uh, roughly nine inches overall with a four inch blade. All right, and the knife weighs in at 126.6 grams. The sheath weighs 97.2 grams for a total knife and sheath weight of 223.8 grams 
with the uh, ulti clip included, which is uh, metal and is fairly heavy for its size. The uh, handle of this knife is, is quite comfortable. It's kind of a weird hybrid shape, kind of a, a traditional teardrop-shaped puko handle, but also it's got this kind of modern finger groove going for it. It's really grippy, I'll give it that much. And it seems to be comfortable to hold in a variety of grips. Um, pretty happy with that. It is a uh, kind of a stick tang, and the butt of the tang comes out here at the back with sort of a, a small, uh, you could call that a glass breaker point, and also a lanyard loop. That might be handy. The uh, blade is the uh, rhombic profile, where it's, it's actually widest here at this uh, ridge line. It's wider here, and it gets narrow again towards the, uh, towards the spine of the blade. And that is something we see in a lot of uh, traditional, uh, the Tommy-style uh, thin Puko knives. So at the spine, this knife is uh, just about 0.15 inches. But then here at the middle, it's uh, 0.20. The blade is a high carbon tool steel, and we can see that it has been differentially tempered. Uh, there is a clear temper line about a quarter inch up the blade here. I want to say this is something like Rockwell 62 uh, at the edge, and Rockwell 54 back here at the spine, so that should make for a very tough knife. Um, I have read online that we do get uh, edge chipping in these if you beat them around hard, but I don't need to beat a knife that hard. That's what I've got an axe for. Uh, we should also point out this is a true Scandi grind. We go all the way right down to the edge with no uh, secondary bevel. There does appear to be a very teeny tiny micro bevel right at the edge, and uh, that doesn't bother me though. I would probably put that there myself when I sharpen this. And... Uh, just, just kind of by feel and by eye, it is very sharp right out of the box. How sharp right out of the box? Well, let's see. No complaints there. Not that right out of the box sharpness really means anything. I mean, it's nice to have, but after I use this a while, I'm going to have to sharpen it anyway. And then the out of the box sharpness really just doesn't matter. I should point out for you bushcrafters out there, this knife does feature a very sharp cornered 90 degree spine. Should be good for scraping things like, you know, kindling, uh, ferro rods, whatever you want to scrape. Uh, it's got a good corner for that. One of the complaints I've heard online with other reviews of this knife is that the handle uh, doesn't seal tightly to the blade. Um, here at the uh, at the back of the blade, and that's true. Uh, this handle is is a rubber uh, kind of material, and you can pull on it. And there is a slight tiny gap there where water or you know food juices or blood or whatever you you've got on your knife could get in there and cause a corrosion problem over time. That's just something to be aware of. I don't know that there's any practical way to seal that up. But I think as long as you don't go swimming with this and you're good about keeping it clean after you use it, it probably won't be that much of a problem. As a relative size comparison, the uh, Raka Corpi Soturi is roughly the same size as a Mora Companion HD or a uh, Benchmade Super Freak folding knife. Actually, it's a little, it's a little bit bigger in, in blade length than the Benchmade. And uh, to compare it against a, a commonly uh, known larger knife, it's uh, quite a bit smaller than a uh, K-Bar Marine Corps fighting knife, just to kind of put it in, in a uh, perspective. Okay, here's how the uh, Ulti clip works on this thing. It took a minute to figure this out. In, uh, in this configuration, the way it comes, this is really, really stiff. Like, you are not getting that over your belt. But it's got this mechanism. It's like a, a locking cam. So what you do is, the top piece of this opens up. And that takes the pressure off the locking clip. Now this is really floppy and easy to work with. You could slip that over your belt. And you wouldn't have to take your belt off and feed it through the loop then. And just lock her closed. And that is as solid as it gets. 
The knife uh, with the ulti clip rides pretty high and tight right on the belt. It's definitely not going anywhere. Good and secure. Okay, so I did some more digging online and I found out what's going on with the ulti clip. Um, this is not really meant to be released when it's, uh, you know, hanging this way on your belt. This is actually a clip designed and intended for inside the waistband concealed carry gun holsters. And, uh, well, I don't really intend to conceal carry this knife. Um, this is how this works. And it makes a lot more sense this way around. Okay. We open the clip. And then this goes inside the pants and the clip goes kind of down over the waistband now you could do this without a belt uh, I happen to be wearing a belt and then you lock it down and that is not going anywhere and then to take it off we unlock the clip pull it right out and you're done so that's pretty cool I don't know that I will ever actually use it that way but that's a nice feature to have so how handy is this knife at a common knife task? Well, what's a common knife task? One of the things I commonly do with my knives is cut food. Let's see how that goes. We've got some summer sausage here and a big block of uh, cheese. Yep, works real good. The interesting thing about this being the uh, rhombic uh, cross section is it seems like it doesn't bind up uh, slicing through food the way a uh, flatter knife would do. You know, because this really is quite thick, and, and it's it's a big, thick, uh, you know, wedge shape. And especially for cutting things like cheese, it would uh, it would tend to, to wedge rather than slice, and uh, and be hard to work with. But as we can see, because the uh, because the spine tapers in, it kind of gives a break point here for things you're slicing to fall away and it actually works really well see we've stuck here on the flat part but it doesn't stick above the, the uh, taper line so what what it amounts to with this uh, particular cross section on here is you've got a fairly thick knife but it slices like a much thinner knife and that's a feature that I really have come to appreciate on this uh, this kind of traditional blade shape. All right, well, that's a quick couple minutes first look at the uh, Raka Corpi Saturi knife. Um, unfortunately, it's still the dead of winter out here where I live, so I'm not going to be able to get out in the woods and really play with this all that much anytime soon. But uh, rest assured, come this summertime, uh, I will definitely be taking this knife outside and putting it to the test. But uh, for now, I guess we're just going to have to uh, play with it here in the house and in the workshop and uh, see how that goes. Uh, more to come on that later. So I hope you found that interesting, and I'll be right back here in the workshop with another video just as soon as I can. See you then. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot my Finn candy. Let's check this out. All right, what do we got here? It says, uh, it says Suomi on it, which uh, is, is the name for Finland in the Finn language. But then it says Panda, like the bear? Is this panda bear flavored candy? I don't know, it looks like chocolate. It smells like chocolate. And uh, for the record, uh, I would like to point out that uh, eating strange unknown candy that just came to you in a box from a foreign country unexpectedly is probably uh, not the kind of thing that you should be eating, but here goes nothing. Mmm. Okay, it's solid chocolate through and through. Not bad. I mean, this is really good. I can't tell you much about the Corby Sturry knife yet, because I haven't got to test it. But, Panda Candy, I do recommend it. Mm -hmm.